everyone, my name is Codename Gamma, and I'm here to show you how to install Linux on your Xbox by shoving this little penguin up the Ethernet port of your Xbox and making it run nicely with your other Xbox applications without losing that original functionality. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so, what we're going to do is start with Internet Explorer, or whatever your browser is, and we're going to go to xdsl.org. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to download Damn Small Linux. And it's a small download, about 50 megabytes. Uh, not very bad. So go ahead and just go to Xbox Linux SourceForge site. And go down over here and we're going to go to XDSL 0.5. And go ahead and you'll want to go ahead and click uh, download. Scroll down again. And we want to go ahead and do XDSL 0.5.zip. And what you're going to want to do is scroll down again and just go ahead and download it right there. I'm going to use flash get because my connection sucks and it can resume. And we're going to go ahead and just let this download. And yeah, like I said before, it's not that big. Actually, this is 43 megabytes. So once it's done, go ahead and exit out of there and go to where you downloaded it. I just have it on the desktop right now. And you're going to open it up and you're going to want to go ahead and copy the readme and the xdsl iso and just extract those to your desktop or whatever your working folder is open up the iso and in there you have a folder called noptix and a bunch of them and then default.xbe I already made a folder on the desktop so which I'm going to extract called xdsl And then you're just going to want to go ahead and drag the Noptics folder in. Let that extract. Default.xpe. Linuxboot.xpe. And then go into Noptics and drag the last two files in. Go ahead and go back. And now we can go ahead and close out of this. And we're going to want to leave this open because now we got to make some changes. So you might want to go ahead and open that with WordPad and make that big so you can read everything and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an FTP install and you're going to want to go ahead and copy that title DSL all that stuff that I'm, I'm highlighting right now copy it and we can minimize that and then go to linuxboot.config and we want to edit this file as well you can open it with a WordPad and replace all the lines with the one that you just copied from readme. And we want to close that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to close everything up and we're going to go ahead and FTP into our Xbox and copy everything where it's supposed to be. So you're going to go ahead and connect. As usual, mine's 192.168.2.3, Xbox, username, password, Xbox, we're going to go to drive E. And you're just going to want to go ahead and copy everything into the root of drive E. So we're going to go where we have it, the XDSL, and then just copy everything into drive E. And let that copy over. It's not too big, so it's not going to take that long, unless you're on a really slow 10 millibit network, but even then, it's only 15 megs. And go ahead and disconnect, and we're going to go ahead and boot into our Xbox now, after we clean everything up. Okay, so we're now on the Xbox side of things, and we're going to boot it up.
And of course we have our Xbox Media Center. So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to that location where we copied default.xbe and we're going to run it. So that goes down to My Files and Drive E and scroll down to default.xbe and run it by pressing A. And there we go. This is the Linux bootloader and we're going to run from FAT from FATX on E and it's going to start booting. And you're going to notice this looks a lot like any Linux boot and this is damn small Linux. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to let this boot like normal. If you have a USB keyboard it would be a good idea to plug it in using that USB adapter that you used for your uh, for your USB stick. And then as you can see the desktop came up and we have a uh, a virtual keyboard. It's not quite done loading. Once you see the uh, the bars back there, that's your gauges and uh, stuff. And that's when you can tell it's fully done loading. And you use the uh, the gamepad to uh, move the mouse around. So that's how you can do it. If you don't have a keyboard, you can use a virtual keyboard, even though it sucks. I don't use it. I have a USB keyboard, so I can exit out of that. And the first thing I want to show you is Firefox. And as you all know, the, actually you can see here that uh, the first thing, you know, we have a bunch of applications. We have Firefox, we have a uh, writing program, we have a PDF viewer, we have a multimedia program. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our network card. We're going to get a system, and we're going to go net setup and then net card config. We're going to run it, and then it's going to ask you use DHCP. If you have a DHCP on your network, or your computer automatically gets the IP address, you want to go ahead and go yes to that. Since I don't, you have to put in, I'm going to have to put in all these settings manually, and these will save every time XDSL boots. It will automatically go to the IP address you tell it to you this time. It's just a bunch of these simple questions. Okay, and now it's done. It's setting those uh, network settings and saving them, and now it's going to exit. So now that your network is set up, you can go ahead and go to Firefox here, and you should hopefully get to the home page. As you can see, this is Firefox, so you should be able to go just about anywhere. And to show you that, I'm actually going to go to... to uh, bsod.org, bsodtv.org, sorry. As you can see, we have graphics, and it's all loads up, and it looks pretty nice on Firefox. If it asks you about these security certificates, just click cancel or whatever, I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, and it's a full web browser. You can do downloading, you can do email, you can do whatever you need to from here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go file, and then we can quit. That's all. I mean, it's Firefox. You know how to use Firefox. So the next thing I want to show you is this My DSL over here. And what this will allow you to do is download apps from the internet that will automatically download once they're done downloading. Or install once they're done downloading. Sorry. And uh, so we're going to go to Net. And there's one Pacific application I want to show you called uh, XChat. It's down here, way at the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and click download. And then it's going to ask you where you want to download it. I just download it to the temp. It's going to download. I mean, it's not a big download. I think it's like a meg and a half. So as long as you have a pretty decent network, I mean, you should be able to use the XDSL downloader.
And I mean, these apps are pretty simple to do. I mean, there's tons of apps in there. You can just pick from almost whatever. So we're going to go ahead and run Xchat, and we're going to actually go into the BSOD IRC chat room. If you've never been in there, I mean, maybe your computer goes down or whatever, and you have XDSL and you need help from us to get it working. This would be a great alternative if you don't have another PC that you can get on IRC with. So you want to go ahead and set your nicknames. Refer to Mustang's uh, IRC segment if you don't know how to use IRC at all. I think that was in episode 2 or 3 maybe. Don't quote me on that because I'm not exactly sure. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click new server. And server name, we're just going to label this BSOD TV or whatever. It doesn't matter, and the server is irc.bsodirc.org. And you're going to leave the port the same, leave all of that the same. Go ahead and use the auto connect or don't. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and turn the proxy off and go to OK. And we're going to go ahead and connect to it. As you can see, it's connecting. It's actually going through the internet and connecting to the server. And there we go. We are connected to the server. Now we're going to have to use the join command and join the room IRC or uh, BSOD, which is the main chat room. And there you go. You can see everyone is uh, logged in. You can type your messages in here and start chatting right off. So yeah, if you ever need computer tech support or you messed up doing a hard drive installation and you can't get your computer working, this would be a great alternative to contact us. So since that's done, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to quit. And, you know, we're, there's, a X, there's a DSL downloader. There's almost 200 applications, if not more. So, I mean, if you need something, there's a bunch there. There's also, you know, a built-in FTP client. There's a built-in VNC client. There's tons of stuff. So what we're going to do is, uh, there's also a bunch of servers. If you go to system and you go to demons, there's an SSH server and there's an NFS server, uh, F uh, web server and an FTP client or an FTP server also. So if you need to host those files on your network for like a LAN party or, uh, or at your office or whatever, you just could just copy your files onto your Xbox, pick it up and go. And of course, the DSL applications will be under the My DSL. That's there. So, you know, that's pretty much it. It's a small client, easy to configure, easy to use. So here you go ahead and we're just going to shut it down. And of course, it, shut, it shuts down like any other Linux client. And it's pretty fast, you know. It's um, better than... I was going to show you Gen 2 X, but it was way too slow and laggy because it has to do a lot of swapping. So now if you turn your Xbox back on, it's going to just come up like a normal Xbox. There's no... You can still use it as for its original functionality, play your games or watch videos or whatever. But now you can do Linux on it and browse the web. So I hope you liked my segment and uh, visit my website www.codenamegamma.com and check my uh, tutorials for uh, on how to do this installation and check the show notes. This has been Codename Gamma, and uh, have a wonderful day.